All right, so we have now a game with uh, Arnason. Uh, well, uh, Arnason was in uh, that period one of uh, the the most promising young players from Iceland. They had a very good chess school in Iceland, starting from uh, Grandmaster Olafsson, who was one of the most uh, 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 well-known players from uh, this country. He was, I mean, like Anand in our time, you know, from from India, you know, like this. The know, first one, like yeah, the, the big first name one then... from that, uh, you know, well-known uh, Icelandic chess school. You see, mm-hmm. and afterwards, the the well, the big uh, company of young players came, and later on, they had a very strong uh, Olympic team like this, you know, many mm-hmm. grand masters and so on, you know. And finally, later on, they org- I mean, uh, in meantime, they organized, of course, the, the match for the World Championship between Fischer and Spassky. Everybody yes. knows that, yeah. yeah. So the game will be very interesting because in one moment it was um, a novelty. I mean, in, uh, in some position, he tried to improve the game for black. And mm-hmm. because of this, the game will be very interesting theoretically. So you played with white. I played with white, and we have a normal position from Taras, the so-called Taras variation for white. Uh, he plays uh, the most uh, normal uh, game. I mean, he takes with the knight in d5. If he takes with the e pawn, then white plays against the Isolani. Later on, black uh, stays with the isolated pawn on d5 with a very complicated game, but usually white is always a little bit better, you know. So the name of the isolated pawn is Isolani? Isolani, that's the name in, in chess, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. internationally. So, okay, after knight takes d5, bishop d3, takes, takes, bishop e7, castle, castle. Okay, rook e1. And now, uh, usually the, the alternative instead of bishop f6 is knight f6, Later on, black tries to play b6, bishop b7, rook c8. This is the idea for black, you see, mm-hmm. the alternative. Bishop f6 is, uh, I mean, was in that period a, a new line found uh, by the, if I uh, re- remember well, uh, by the Hungarian grandmasters, Portish, uh, Ribli, and so on. And they played uh, successfully enough. The idea is to have the knight in d5, uh, after bishop f6, the idea is to put out the knight in e7, you know, consolidating the position from d5. The knight has yeah. to stay there, if possible, you know. But why to retreat with the knight on e6? Not Be- have the e6? This is the best, uh, is mm. considered the best um, idea against the isolated pawn from d4, you know. Ah, I see. Yeah, you play usually with black against mm. the isolated pawn from d4, but it's very complicated, you know. White has good attacking chances. It's a very complicated game, you know. Mm. It was theory in that time, almost until the 30th move, you can imagine, you know, a long way. But mm-hmm. okay, after bishop f6, the game is very unclear. And later on, um, many very strong grandmasters like Karpov played also like this with black. So it seems that the idea is okay for black, you know. It's very, very difficult to break uh, the, the defense. The black defense, you see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bishop e4 is considered, I mean, this move order is considered the best, even now, you see, bishop e4 and knight e5. Well, and uh, after g6, uh, he's almost forced to play bishop a6, because if you don't play bishop a6, you don't have anything with white, you see. So, okay, bishop a6, he has time to play bishop g7, you take in g7, and he takes in g7, uh, in g7. okay. And now, you have to move something, of course, B- queen b3 is very good, because now you threaten to come with other rook in uh, d1, and in some positions you want to trade everything in d5 and have a strong knight in d5 against the weaker bishop from c8 for the moment, you know. But I told you, it's not so clear. You know? So here it is, knight f6 is good, is correct, rook d8, uh, d1, and now has time to take the bishop, the strong bishop from e4. And it's not clear at all, you know. White, it seems that white has a very strong position, but it's not clear. Knight takes e4, now b6. He wants to come with the bishop in b7. And the game is balanced, you know. It's not a clear edge, you know. 
So you want to start something on the king side with h4, you know, h4, bishop, b7, and now h5. The only way to play with white, you see. Try to, to have some attacking chances, you know. But with black, you have to be careful because if you don't play knight e5, knight f5 immediately, white threatened already h6 check and come with the knight in f6 and is almost winning attack, you know. So knight f5 is a very good move. Queen h3. And now this is the move that uh, black hoped will completely equalize, if not more. I mean, he wants to, to have the some initiative, I mean. Well, it wasn't better to maybe to pick up the pawn from uh, d4 with the knight? Well, it's very dangerous. Probably it's lost for black if he takes, yeah. you know, yeah. Because he's pinned, you know, he's mm. pinned. And uh, uh, he almost loses a piece after knight. Ah, uh, okay. takes, yeah. Because you have time to play, for instance, queen c3, you know. And after queen c3, he loses a piece. Because if you open the big diagonal, you are almost mated, you know. Mm -hmm. But you don't have time to go away with the knight because the queen is pinned. So knight d4 loses him very, very quickly, you know. It's a very yeah. big mistake. No, he has still to defend. And queen h4 is okay. Queen h4 is a very good defensive move, you know. So after queen h4, uh, unfortunately, white has to, you know, to accept to trade the queen. Uh, this is not very nice in such a position, you know. And now you have to try to demonstrate that you have enough initiative even without queen, but uh, mm. we have a new position and a new game yeah. starting from here. Yeah. Yeah, so. so before it was very tactical. Now you have to play f3 is a very good stop move, you know, to try to take back in e4. If, for instance, now black takes in e4, you take with yeah. the pawn and yeah. then it's all right. White is clearly better. But of course he doesn't take. No. So now... Rook d8, he continues to attack the, the d4. Knight g4 is more or less forced because you have to, to threaten something if you don't play knight g5. And he has time to come back with the knight in f5. Black is already better because he attacks the pawn. If you lose the pawn in d4, black has a very strong initiative and probably winning position. So knight g5 threatens a lot of tactical things, you see. He plays the normal move, h6. Huh? And now... From this moment, again, the game is very tactical. You know, you sacrifice something in f7, and everything is more or less forced from now on, you see. So he has to accept to take in g5. So you take the rook, he takes the rook, and you take in e6. Okay, and we have finally this position. You know, that was the idea from, for, from White when he played knight g5. He had this combination in mind, you know. So now we have this position where white has still the strong initiative, two rooks and two pawns against rook, two pieces and four pawns, you know. So we'll see who has the, the edge here. In my opinion, white has already a very good position and the game will demonstrate this, uh, this idea, you know. So rook e1, you want to take a piece with, yeah, uh, with the rook e7 check. So, of course, he has to Different. move away the king. And now, after rook e7, at least you have the seventh rank. You know, you have initiative and the seventh rank. Now you have to play move by move. You accept to give the pawn in h5, but you take instead the pawn from a7, and finally you have two passed pawns, you know, two collected pawns, connected uh, pawns, a and b. And that wins the game, you'll see. So after rook e7 has to take, takes, and bishop d5. Rook takes there, and black finally takes in h5. Of course white is better, but you have to try to win, you know. So rook a6, of course, king g7, b3. Now you, want, you give here the, a small initiative for black, but instead you can take the second pawn from b6, and you have two connected pawns, like I told you before, you know. So, okay, now you take in g4, he takes in g4, and g3. Good. Knight f3 check, forced now. And now he has to take the pawn. And now, finally, we have this endgame. This endgame is very clear. White, only white can try to win. 
but you have to calculate very well because the black king is a little bit too far. Therefore, finally, white wins. And we'll see how. Bishop f3, this is his last hope, you know, Bishop f3. He tries to do something because it was already threatened rook d6 winning a piece. You know, if he didn't play Bishop f3, yeah. the threat was rook d6 winning a piece. You know, he was pinned. Okay. So a4. Now we have time to go very quickly with our pawn, with a pawn. So he tries to come back with the king. A7. Okay. He has to protect twice in a8, you know, with knight c7. He doesn't give you the chance to, to come very quickly to rook b8 and a8. Okay, now that yeah. was the, the only uh, possibility for black. So now on b4, knight c7, okay, b5. And everything is very clear. He protected the, the square a, a8. We have two connected pawns very you know, dangerous, b5 and a7. But if you win, we, you'll win by one tempo here, you see, in this endgame. Therefore, the endgame is very interesting. So rook f6. Now, if he doesn't realize the, the threat, you want to sacrifice immediately in f3. That is mm. the idea. And afterwards, you have three pawns, two, three uh, free pawns, yeah. has to go back with the king against the g pawn, and then you have time to come with the king at, to attack the knight from a8, and you win mm. with white, you see. So, okay, yes, the only move, bishop d5, now you have, you come with your king, and black is in Tsukzon, finally, here. Doesn't have any move. He resigned here. He resigned because he has no moves. Mm. This is the problem, you know. Has no good moves. For instance, if he plays, let's say, king uh, c, c7, I mean, the only move, you know. Yeah. King c7, you attack with uh, uh, the king? rook, uh, with king d4, yes, king d4. He has to move the bishop somewhere to f3, for instance, yeah. And probably here, with the, the best possibility to win immediately is king c5. King c5, and you threaten already b6 check. And with the two pawns, two connected pawns, and the rook, that is easily winning for white. Yeah. 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 But it was move by move, I told you, you know. The game was very interesting because you can transpose from a very tactical position in a strategical one, you know. Yeah. I mean, winning in a more quiet way like this. You gave a piece, you sacrificed something, you have a very complicated, uh, you know, middle game. And finally, you come to this endgame where it is clear that white has a very good uh, chance to win, and you have to realize uh, in, the in the best way. You know, see? Yeah, I yeah. So therefore, the game is very interesting. Nice. Yeah. All right. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Gurgio. Yeah. But very complicated, I told you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so after this... Uh, Game this result Valve. after our game, I uh, I could win the, the big uh, international tournament that we played together. You know. uh, okay. It was in New York, I think, no? Uh, yes. In New yes. York, yes. New York, 78. Yeah, that's right.